Hello guys, so welcome back to another session of learning Unity with me. Um, from where we last left off, we were able to set up the background. Uh, we did have to learn a little bit more about like aspect ratios, pixels per unit, uh, which we, we, we uh, he did uh, introduce during the block breakers game. But it's still hard for me to kind of consume it all. Uh, what I'm hoping for is that eventually through enough experience I'll able to start connecting the dots so yeah all right so let's go ahead and continue with our tutorial slicing it up so that we have a walk that we can use to animate in our oh, game so we're going to start the animation today right I'm actually pretty excited. In this video, we're going to talk about the two main types of 2D animation that we'll be working with, sprite sheet animation and bone-based animation, and also importing a sprite, sprite sheet, based and slicing animation, it up animation and bone-based bone animation, animation, and also importing a sprite sheet, and then slicing it up so that we have a walk that we can use to animate in our game in upcoming videos. So let's jump in and get started. Okay, so there's two... I'm actually going to... Actually, does it show? No, it doesn't. Um, it's cool. All right, so we're just gonna take notes like this. So we'll have uh, 2D animation, and yeah, I wanna, I do wanna check. Um, yeah, so he does have files. Let me just quickly put them in our in the in the project. Alright, cool. Two types of animation that we'll be implementing mostly sprite Actually, sheet animation but also a little bit of bone based animation so you can see what it's all about now before i get started and show you a little explanation of the difference between the two you might want to get started downloading the resources if you want to go and get all of the glitch resources all of the images and the the characters and stuff there's a ton of it you can go to the uh, uh the link that i'll give you in the resources that's the best way to do this find the downloads and see all sprite sheets and there's a zip file there and if I show you, here we go, uh, let's just have a look in here. This is what I've downloaded already. There are, there it is, there are folders after folders after folders. There is so much content in here, it is incredible. So, uh, you know, I might use these um, for the games. I'm probably just going to be demoing. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and see if we can download that as well. So we gotta go to downloads. Ah, oh, this is downloads. Um, is it this one? Yeah, it's this one. So we have all sprite sheets. Let's download that. We can download this, 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 and this. Uh, I'm not sure if it's downloading though. It's not. What? Why isn't it not downloading? That's weird. Maybe I guess I can't, I can't download them uh, It's great stuff to get your hands on. And within here, you Does can see there's sprite it? sheets like this one. And there's a no. whole bunch of, of stuff going on. Let's talk a little bit about what that means with sprite sheets in a moment. Uh, if this no longer exists, or if you don't want to grab all of that, then I've given you the resource against the resources. Oh. I've given you exactly what I'm using in this section so, of the course. So it. oh. it's way less uh, size, and there's less stuff in it. But uh, you can just go and download the stuff that I've given you. I'm hoping it doesn't spam. Let me try downloading this just to see if it's just my issue. No, it does work. It does allows me to download it again. So I guess it just doesn't if work. If you want, that I'll be using. 
Okay, now what are these two types of animation? Let me give you an example. This is from my prototype, so your Unity is not going to look like this at all at the moment. We'll get to this point, so don't worry if you see a bunch of stuff on here that doesn't quite make sense. What I want to show you that in my game I have a sprite based, a sprite sheet based animation so that when this lizard comes walking onto the screen, there it is there, you can see it walking, I'm going to pause and then just progress my game one frame at a time. Frame, frame, frame. And you can see that each frame there is a slight difference in what this character looks like. That's because it's coming from a sprite sheet. A sprite sheet is a single image. This is just one image with about, let's see, uh, one, about 16 or so uh, images that an artist has painted or crafted that image and then moved it slightly, that image. I've got a bit of a zoomed in version here. So you can see drawn that and then move the hand a little bit, move the legs a little bit and then move the hands and legs a little bit more. So drawn this, drawn this, drawn this and not from scratch. They're going to be doing a bit of copy and pasting and maybe delete that hand and then move it a little bit. But these are individual images. Like each of these are individual images on a sprite sheet. So these are sprites They're on a sprite sheet and you can see when I zoom out you can see all of it in context and then this will be one PNG image. So this is a single image and what we need to do is slice it up and say this is one image. So this is frame number one, this is frame number two, this is frame number three and then when Unity combines them and says play frame one, then two, then three, then four we get this sort of effect where it's playing them one after another and of course this is in my prototype build where I'm also telling this lizard to move across the screen so it gives the impression that it is walking doop, 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 across the screen. Okay, so that is using a sprite sheet to do sprite sheet animation. Okay, let me show you a little That's bit really about cool. bone-based animation. And I've gone and grabbed from the asset store this fantasy 2D character free, as you can see, it's free. And just set that up just very quickly. We're not gonna be using this at all in our game. I just wanted to show you an example of bone-based animation. And this was a nice, quick, easy way to do that. Okay, so this is a little demo game, and the point is we've got this character here. Character is comprised of a whole bunch of individual elements. This, as opposed to sprite sheet, where this would be all drawn as one thing, there's a head that is separate to a sword, separate to an arm, so there's all these little uh, pieces that can get combined together. If I can drill into this arm, I can move it off and move it around, so it's a separate piece. And then I can rotate this arm and say like, I'm walking along, walking along the street. So this type of animation is called bone-based animation and it's all about saying, okay, when a character moves, the arm needs to walk like that and also the legs need to, if I can drill into it here, the legs need to do a little bit of walking. I need to drill in a little bit better than that, but you get the point here, maybe it's moving left and right and so. So when, let me see if I can undo it and put his arm back on, or it might be funny if we leave the arm out there, then when I play the game, and I'll just click on play, I'll stay zoomed in over here so you can see what's going on, and I click attack, or if I move, you can see that these are moving in and out, rotating, and we have an idle animation here that's just saying, move this piece that's known as the arm, just move it to the left and right, that's left and right, left bone and right, move the head up. Basically, we, um, we don't, well, I mean, obviously we don't have a sprite sheet, but like for this one, we have to, I guess, create the animation based on the motion of the, uh, of the sprites components, kind of like the arm, the sword, the head, the legs. We would need to apply motion to them and then record it as part of the animation as opposed to a sprite sheet based we I feel like sprite sheet might be a little easier because you know you're just drawing them and then you just you have to make sure that you know it looks well uh, when played consecutively from each other but I, don't know, I think this one's pretty easy to it looks pretty simple to like you, you have to do something with the animation. I remember seeing some some videos on of Unity developers and I remember seeing like a lot of things happening here. And down a little bit every now and again. So maybe Blink. that's, what we're, so that's do bone based animation that's what we're and do it too. it takes a lot more work to within Unity here to set up exactly how the bits and pieces move. The animation is happening within Unity whereas for the sprite beast sprite beast sprite based animation it's all been taken care of by an artist and they give you the sprites and say there you go so both are cool both are fine but it just depends on uh, what your artist I think I might be doing this more because 
if I just need if I can just draw it once and that's it I'm good you know because <laughs> um, I don't know I guess actually no a sprite sheet might be a little bit more difficult because you know you're actually drawing multiple pieces and you gotta make sure like uh, unless you have like you know a like a program or software that you know inner like not interlace I don't know if that's the right word to use but like overlay on top of each other so that you can actually see how the animation plays on top of the previous animation I mean that's also a, something that can really help with sprite sheet uh, sprite sheets but I don't know um, I think both are cool I'm willing to try it out both just to see which one matches all the artist and where you want my to put taste the so I'm gonna focus mostly on sprite sheet animation in this section of the course but a little bit of bone base just so we can practice it. Next up I'll be importing a sprite sheet and slicing it up so if you haven't downloaded the assets against this lecture already now's a good time to do that or to download the assets from the glitch website find where you download those and let's see in sprite sheets so within the folder in sprite sheets I'm going to look for lizard walk drag that over into my assets directory and I need to create myself a new folder, so right click, create folder, I'll call this sprites, and then drag lizard walk in. Um, let me double check if that's, um, that's what he gave us, and, he, wait, yeah, we, we got sprite sheets, which is entirely different. Let me just create a, let me just do what he did, create a sprites folder. Um, you guys don't really need to see this. Uh, lizard walk, and then we just drag and drop that there, and yeah, all right, cool. Into sprites, double click, and you can see lizard walk here. If we drag up the little preview, so click down the bottom and drag, we can see there is our sprite sheet. So if you've already sliced up sprite sheets before and you know how to do it, here's a good time for a challenge. The challenge is to import a sprite sheet and then to slice it up. Uh, so that you have individual units to it. If you haven't done that before, then let's do it together. Yeah, or you might that. want to. But yeah, before we begin, actually, since I think I mentioned in the past that I just wanted to see how their sprite sheet look like, so I can I can then um, see um, if I can find a sprite sheet that I could use instead of using theirs. So if I click on this, it should be a PNG. Um, so what I can see is that. You know, definitely white background. Um, so let's let's actually look if we can find our own sprite sheets. Um, yeah. So let's look at enemy. Pokemon Dash. Because we need a walking animation. Or else it wouldn't work. thinking what would be a good enemy I don't know why there's like Danny Phantom there <laughs> it's kind of funny this one angel enemy how do we download this sheet Cause if I say you know download um I go to my folder like wait I don't know if you can see it but yeah it basically keeps the purple background so I can't really credit not required do not steal I wonder how we, how we can use it then 
because like we needed to have a white background or else we'll be able to see see that so I don't know if I can even use this to be honest with you texture whoa what the that looks kind of creepy these look creepy not gonna lie um, textures I assume is for like levels sprites I do want to use but it seems like you can't really use them let me just quickly look at how to use it how to use uh, sprites Sorry. probably have to watch the video later um, maybe you check out the forum resources So I'd have to like look through here, uh, but I guess I'll do that later. We'll just go with what he has. We watch me and then do it afterwards. Okay, let's start slicing up. Click on lizard walk, then sprite mode. We need to change that from single to multiple, single and to multiple. then to click the apply button so that that apply. sticks. It now thinks Unity now thinks that there's. Uh, let me just quickly note down something. We have there's a sprite sheet. And bone based animation. There's multiple sprites on this one PNG that we've given it. Click on the sprite editor to bring up the sprite editor window. And then up in the top left, you'll see a slice button. On slice button, we're going to leave it as automatic and then click on slice. And you might not have noticed it, but now we have white lines around each of our sprites. So when we do automatic, Unity is saying, okay, all this is transparent. That's clearly not a sprite. I'm going to put a tight box around each of these, what I think is a sprite, and then give it a cool. name that goes up from two How to Unity three to four that. and so on. So you can see each of these numbers. You can rename these if you want. I find it a little bit unnecessary for what we're doing. We've got the numbers that are increasing. So click on apply. And that is now your sprite sheet all chopped up. You can see it's chopped up by going back onto your sprite sheet, opening it up, and you'll see each of these. Make sure we drag up our preview so we can see it. Each of these has been chopped up to create an individual frame of our walk cycle. That's pretty cool. So let me, let me do that. Um, so we're going to go to our sprites. So far, there's nothing here. Or we can't, there's no hasn't been split up yet go here you say that it's a multiple sprite mode I'm guessing single is just a single uh, sprite item but then we click on multiple it means a sprite sheet polygon not really understanding what that could be if we go to our sprite editor uh, I guess we have to apply first and then we have our sprite sheet showing and what we want to do is we want to slice it you want to do it automatically and uh, yeah so then what unity does is pretty interesting that it detects what's important and what's not and it sees that um, the transparency so that's why I needed to find something transparent or else I don't think unity would be able to figure out what's important and what's not so unity figured out like this small area is the sprite that we're interested in so then we hit apply and now um, wait I don't know if it actually showed it to you guys unfortunately I, po I probably didn't um, but it basically what he, he saw uh, so essentially now we have instead of having that considered to be one uh, one image representing the whole sheet we ha we now have this sheet being represented in multiple images based on the um, on how we split each image which Unity does for us um, so yeah so we can play it 
Alright, let's continue. And then it should loop back to the start, so if we were to simulate this being an animation, that is how our character would look walking, which is awesome! So that's all we're going to do in this video. I've had a couple of mega marathon videos of late, I know, so this one I'll keep a little bit quicker. In the next video, we'll be diving in and taking care of animation and actually making our lizard animate and uh, look like he's walking in our game. So great work, and I'll see you shortly. Animator controller and animation. Hello again, in this video we're going to unravel the mysteries of the animator controller and create our game object lizard that is walking using our sprite sheet animation. So let's jump in and get started. I'm going to start off by tidying up my new sprite. Just get rid of that, that was a placeholder, don't need it anymore. What we do need to do though is right click create empty and call this lizard. And then just reset the transform. Okay, now I've been calling it Lizard. If you downloaded this, or if you're looking oh, to download, this. hold it, don't and get started. Well, I, I kind of missed that. What happened? Hello again. In this video, we're going to unravel the mysteries mm. of the animator controller and create our game object lizard that is walking using our sprite sheet animation. So let's jump in and get started. I'm going to start off by tidying up my new sprite. Just get rid of that. That was a placeholder. Don't need it anymore. What we do need to do though is right click, create empty and call this lizard. Give it a sprite render. And then just reset the transform. Okay, now I've been calling it lizard. If you downloaded this or if you're looking to download from the main asset pack, it's called the Deimaginator. I've just recalled it lizard because Deimaginator is a bit d tricky to say throughout this course. Um, but that's where it is if you're looking in the official glitch assets. The Imaginator is the lizard. Now to see our lizard we need to add a component which is the sprite renderer. Sprite renderer, great, and we've done this before. Let's find uh, one of the frames from the Lizard Walk, just Lizard Walk 7. Drop that into the sprite in here, and now it knows what to show. I'm going to change the order in layer to 5 so it sits on top of my background, and just with my W key, move the Lizard or Deimaginator into the middle of the screen. There we go, it looks pretty good. So the sprite renderer is needed to actually display it on the screen. Now we're going to be dealing with animation, so first of all make sure you have the animator and animation windows somewhere. You can go up to window, they've changed this recently in, in Unity, these windows change around every now and again. If you find the animation tab, wherever that might be for you, and then make sure you open up the animation and animator windows. Uh, I'm going to do that real quick. So window, animation, animation, how do I put this? Oh, there it is. Alright. Yeah, I'm gonna have to decrease the um, decrease the console or my visual of the animation, which is fine, you know. Alright. Okay, I've got mine placed down the bottom here. Now let's talk about a little bit of terminology so we're crystal clear. First of all, the animator component assigns animations to game objects through an animator controller. Uh, let me write that down. So the animator component assigns animations, assigns animations to game objects. Assigns animations to game objects using the animation controller. Okay, so that doesn't necessarily make things clearer, but we'll be adding a component onto our game object, which uh, allows that game object to say, right, you need to have some animations and they'll be driven through the animator controller. What is the animator controller? Well, it's the arrangement of animations and transitions, and it's a state machine, so it could have a walk state or a walk animation, Animator controller and arrangement of animations and transitions. Um, arrangements of animations. And then what was it? Stage. So 
I guess it's also known as a state machine. And then a transition that says if the player holds down the sprint key, then we transition into the run animation. Mm -hmm. So that's all handled. So basically we can add some logic so that a certain animation can be played. He gave us an example of uh, listening to, like, let's say, the user pressing the shift key, um, which makes the player run. So the animator controller uh, recognizes the input and starts displaying a different animation. In the animator controller. And then we need our individual animations. Obviously, these are specific pieces of motion, the run, the jump, the shoot, the fall over. And then also, as we've added already, we need the sprite renderer. And this is uh, what we need to actually display the sprites Specific onto the screen. So there's some terminology for you. And now what I'm going to do is something a little bit different. I'm going to go through the process of creating the animator controller and some animations for my character here. What I'd like you to do as a challenge is just watch and absorb and then see if you can do all of this yourself when we get to the time of the challenge. So the steps of the challenge will be, when we get to it, will be... Well, first of all, watch and then do it on your own later on. Right, I'm do that. It'll be to create an animator component, to create an animator controller, to add the animator controller to the lizard game object, and to create an animation for the walk. And then obviously we need to do a little bit of tuning to the speed of the animation so that it looks good and makes sense. So that will be the challenge shortly after I take you through all the steps. Uh, I'm going to give you that challenge, and if you get stuck on the challenge, you can come back and rewatch for any hints that you want. So there's the challenge, you can do it right now, or you can wait until after I've done it. Okay. Oh wait. So let's jump in and get started no on this. We have our lizard, we need to add a component. This will be the animator component. Okay, animator now it's saying, okay, I'm ready to do some animations, but I need to know what is the controller? What is the thing that's going to be determining when you run and when you jump and what jump is. So we need to create one of those. I've got a an animations folder. This is, I was playing around just before, a bit naughty off screen. Let me delete that and do it so we can do it together. Okay. Uh, in my assets folder, I'm gonna create, surprise, surprise, a new folder called animations. And in our animations folder, right click and create animator controller. Hmm. We'll call this lizard. And you can see it's now populated in our animator. We have some stuff in there. You can drag these and move them around. These are the states. At the moment, it doesn't quite make sense. There's a not a lot going on. We just have an entry state, the first thing that happens, and the exit. This is when we exit out of this animator controller. We need some animations in here. Now, I'm going to show you my preferred way to create animations. There's a lot of different ways to do it, but I'll show you the way that I like to do it, which is to find the thing we want to animate. So to go to your sprites and find your lizard walk or whatever it is that you've created, highlight all of the frames of your animation, and then right-click, create, find animation, blunk. And now you see down the bottom, we can rename our new animation to be lizard walk. And we now have a lizard walk animation that if we click on our animation tab here, you can see it has all of these frames and these individual frames are corresponding or these keyframes are corresponding to each of our images from our sprite sheet. Now we can't see it at the moment. If we click on play, there's nothing to preview because it doesn't know what the model is or what the representation is. We've already created ourselves a lizard game object. So we'll grab that, drag it on over into our preview. Now when we click the preview button, we see it walking. And in the preview, we can slow it down to see how it goes, or speed it up to see how that goes. But that's not changing the speed of the animation in the game, that's just changing the speed of the preview. What we can do to change the speed of the, uh, the actual animation itself is you see here, samples. At the moment what that's saying is 12 samples per second. We know that our lizard has 16 frames, so it's going to get through those all of those 16 frames in a little over a second. So 12 frames per second, this is taking us up to a second, and there's another three or four frames at the end there. I'm gonna change this to say 100, just to be silly. So in this instance, we're getting through our frames really quickly. If I click play, beep, 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 beep. It's funny, <laughs> it's kinda cool, but it's not quite what the artist was going for, I'm sure. 
I think the happy medium here, just from playing around with it, is 24 frames per second for this character. That's a nice gentle meander that our lizard's doing. Okay, so we now have an animation that's, that's uh, comprised of our sprite sheet individual frames. I'm going to grab this animation and drag it into my animations folder so it's nice and tidy, I know where to find it. Now we have our lizard animator controller and our lizard walk. If we click on lizard as a game object, now we can say under controller, what's the animator controller? Let's click the selector and say it's going to be the lizard. Excellent, it now knows the lizard animator controller is going to drive me. If we click on the lizard animator controller and then click on the animator window, we can see that our lizard walk animation is not yet in there. So what we're going to do, if I can resize my window a little bit here, oh, it's being a bit problematic, there we go, got it, is to grab lizard walk and drag it into my animator controller. It comes in as this orange state called lizard walk, and it's got some details in the inspector that we'll play around with a little bit in upcoming videos, and it has this line that it's created which is a transition. What it's saying in this instance is the entry, so the very moment anything says, hey, I need you to pay attention to the lizard animator controller, which is probably when our lizard is spawned or instantiated, in, in this case it's right from the very start of the game because we've dropped it in our hierarchy, it will go from entry vroom, straight along the transition immediately into lizard walk, and there's no other transitions, there's not a transition to die or to jump, so it will just stay on lizard walk over and over and over. Uh, in this case, because there's only one animation that we have in there. So let's see if that works. We've got our lizard game object. It has the lizard animator controller. The lizard animator controller knows about the lizard, anim uh, lizard walk animation. So if we click play in our game now, what do we see? We see that our lizard does a bit of a walk, but you see it walked and then stopped. That looked like it went through at 16 frames and then stopped which to me says we're not looping. Let's have a look and see where we need to loop. Well, the simplest way to do this is to click on the lizard walk animation we have in our folder here, and you can see in our inspector we have loop time. If you click yes on looped time, now when we click play, that animation should know that by default it just loops over and over. So there we go, loopy loop loop loop. I'll go to the scene view so we can see. And our guy is walking in our game, fully animated, looking amazing. And obviously as time goes on and we implement more features in our game, we can uh, tell it to move across the screen as the animation's going, boop, 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 so it looks like it's actually walking. Okay, so that's the full process. Back to the challenge for you. If you haven't been following along, or if, sorry, if you haven't been creating as you've been going, this is the challenge for you to do now. And uh, if you were following along, you might want to go and create another uh, animator controller and animation just to practice this, to make sure it's really embedded some of the terms are a bit confusing. Create an animator component, create the animator controller, add the animator controller to the lizard game object, create an animation, tune the speed of the animation as we've done, and then once you've done that, once you have your lizard or your whatever you're using in your game walking on the screen through an animation, great work, job done, and you can go along to the next video and we'll continue along with our animation. So great stuff and I'll see you again real soon. All right, so let's see here. Wait, you guys can see it, can you? Uh, hold up. Let me just let me change this. All right, now you guys can see it. So first of all, delete this. You have to create the an empty object. We'll call it Blizzard, and we want to add a sprite renderer so that we can have. We can have like a lizard showing up onto our screen. And there we go. Uh, what? Wait, why isn't it showing here? What? Wait, so what, what happened? Why isn't it showing? What? Oh, wait a minute. Is it because this is the canvas? I wonder if he put it in the canvas. Did he place his in the canvas? No, he didn't. He put it outside. The camera should be focused on the thing. 
world space. That's weird. Let's look at 2D. Where's the camera? Camera's here. What? What is this? Let's reset the transform. There you go. Yeah, I need to get in the habit of doing that. Setting the transform. All right, now we see it. All right, so now we're gonna create a an animator. Animator. So we notice we have we need a controller, and the controller, as we've stated in here, is a assigns animations to game objects using the animation controller. Oh no, an arrangements of animations and transitions. The state machine, which we'll see over here. Um, but first, we need to create an animations asset folder. Um, click here, and then we want to um, actually no. Before we do that, we go to we go to sprites. And then we go shift all the way down. And then we right click. And I think we create an animator controller. No, 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 my bad, my bad. We do that in here. So we go to here, we'll call this lizard block. I think. I'm trying my best to just remember, trying to remember it. And then here, we create the animation. So right click that, create animation. Then we'll say a lizard walk. And then here, we can say lizard walk controller. I'll have to check it up once I see it. But now we have this lizard animation. And I think basically we can just drag one of the images. Because we try to play it right now. Or yeah, if you try to play it, nothing really happens. So they say to just drag and drop a lizard. Or is it this one? Oh, there it is. We got to drag the actual object. Makes sense. So there we go. We have a walking lizard. And I think he did mention how to increase the intervals. So right now, uh, I think uh, it's he said that it's happening one pixel per frame or something like that. Is this how you change it? So 14. Oh no, this is just the time. Um, whoa. Did it close? How did he change the, the time? What's this? Filter. What's this? So ten seconds. One second. So I think it's playing one frame per second. Maybe. Um, but how did he change the speed of it? You know, it's fine. Um, so we have here lizard. Uh, let's actually move that first to the animations. Wait, what happened to it? So here to begin animating, create an animation clip. Oh we drag and drop it. Alright, now I'm lost. Let me just quickly see what he did. And there's no other transition called animations. 
what's going on. We just have an entry. First thing that happens, see, it's now populated in our animator. We my assets folder, I'm going to create, surprise, surprise, a new folder called animations. And in our animations folder, right click and create animator controller. We'll call this lizard. And you can see it's now populated. Um, let me try that again. So we're going to create a animation animator controller and we're going to call it a lizard. To begin animation, create an animation clip. What is this? Oh, this one. Wait, what? I'm confused. Wait, there's lizard one and so why did his look different? Oh, is it, is it this one? It is. Wow. Just put it here somewhere. Mm. All right, so I created the animation. Oh, yeah, we, I guess we have to drop it. So we created the animation here that we could just drag and drop it um, so yeah and I guess in our controller we just drop this and let, let's play it oh it does play it but how do we change the how did he change the time in our animator, we use the controller. One, these are the states, but which is to find the thing we find animation. Blunk. And now you see down the bottom that if we click on our animation tab here, yeah, there's supposed to be something here, but it's not showing up. Is it this one? No. It's not this one. Great new clip. Is it curve? No. They changed it. I'm gonna have to look it up. Hey guys, I've been following you. Actually, let me, let me show you guys. The struggle is real. At the sprite animation, I followed some information. I got so good to a setting up animation. Just found myself. Just found it myself. There's an option to show or hide this GUI. Ah. Let's go back. There it is, show sample rate. So if we increase it, it becomes more condensed because we want 24 frames to, to play per second, is what I'm guessing. If we hit play, yeah, it looks way better. How about 28? Zoom in. Where's the 28? Or how about 30? Oh, I guess I'm supposed to hit enter. You know what? 20, 28 sounds good. 
So now we have the animator, and but if we just hit play by itself, um, it's just gonna loop once. But we, what we can do is go to our animator and say we can activate the loop time, which will make it loop, make the animation loop. There you go. And then we can visualize how it looked like in the game by it moving forward like that. Right. So something to note, this is the part that got my attention, like because I feel like this is also important too. Because originally if we you know, we just left it by default or was was it by default? I think it was fourteen by default. Um it just doesn't look right. It looks like it's kind of slow. I guess that really depends on your game too, but for me, it just doesn't seem right. So if we go, if we increase it, oh, I forgot. forgot you know, twenty is actually pretty good too. But yeah, so by changing the speed of the how the frame is rendered, um, it actually makes the sprite look better. I think that was it, if I'm not mistaken. You can see it has all of So let's see. So, yeah, we created the component. And it's uh, placed in the object. We created the controller, which we have to do right click and create animator controller, which will be assigned to the component um, that we just created. Then we created it. Oh, yeah, we added to the lizard game object. Then we highlighted all the the frames, and then created an animation based off that. And then we also needed to figure out where our, the samples um, tab is, so that we could change the animation speed of the animation. <laughs> right. So yeah, I guess. So we're just done. to practice this to make sure it's really embedded. Some of the terms are a bit confusing. Create an animator component. Basic animation transition. Oh, nice. Oh yeah, we accidentally, I accidentally did that by realizing I wonder like for the bone because I just thought of this like since we didn't really have like an example of how it's made right here we, we see the sprite sheet and we basically you know the sprite sheet uh, the, each frame is next to each other like in, in a uh, consecutive fashion um, so what I'm thinking for the bone based um, animation we have our animation right and let's say oh, we want to create like a walking animation then we would you know play with the, the arm and the leg to make it position to look like it's slightly starting to move and then once we move it then we hit record and then that would take that frame and store it into our um, I guess the animator or the animation controller 
Is this kind of like um, a stop motion film? Is that a good example where we where we move the object, take a picture, and then adjust the picture, adjust the figure again, take another picture, and so forth until we have a full on animation. So yeah. I think that's a uh, bone bone base animation works. And actually that's actually pretty cool. It really makes it easier because well, we don't have to, you know, do all that, you know, drawing, especially for a beginner like me. All we need to do is just, you know, specifically, you know, draw the arm, the legs, the body, the head, and other properties of the player and just create an animation based off the motion of the the sprite as opposed to drawing them individually and then playing them side by side. I don't know, just for me, I guess. Yeah, I'll do that too right now. I'll do it real quick. I don't think I need to show that. So basically, get all this put to the sprites. And then I'm just going to delete the sprite sheets folder. And then go to audio. Ooh, where's audio? I guess I forgot to... Hold up. Extract. All right, so I did that. Nice. I was hoping for a challenge. So let's go ahead and do that. 
So we're going to need the lizard jump. Um, right, so we need to first edit to make sure that we say that's multiple. And then we gotta go to sprite editor. First hit apply, of course. And I am kind of curious why it doesn't automatically detect it like this. But he wanted us to do grid by grid by cell size. Cell size, yeah. So we're gonna do it like that. Um, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, you probably can't, dang it. Um, but yeah, we're going to do grid grid by cell size and then we're going to figure out the the basically the the size of each square. And he did give us a hint saying needing to divide the total width by the number of columns and the total height and number of rows. So um, Let's go do that. So we have here the we have here the dimensions 753 by 16674. So let me just get my calculator real quick. So there's 753 pixels. We want to divide that into one, two. Let me just double click. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Wait, that's width. So we need to divide this by 3 actually. So each, um, each, each grid will have an x value of 251. And for the height, we're gonna have to take one six seven four, divide that by nine, so we get one eighty six. Because there's nine. Uh, there's nine rows, and yeah, let's slice that. So you can't see it at the moment, but I think we'll see it in the video. So we did slice it, and let's apply it. So now when we load it up, we see this jump animation. It's cool. It's kind of interesting how, so there's a huge gap between this one and that one. But it happens so fast that you don't even know, like, like that. That's bigger, bigger, bigger. That's cool. Alright, uh, sorry, I was playing around. Alright, so now let's create the um, the controller first. So we had to go activate the controller and I'll call this. Actually, no, we just need this one's fine. We just need this, which has this part of our controller. And now we just need to create the animation for the, the jump. Uh, so we gotta go back to sprites. Like here, and yeah, we can kind of preview if we wanted to. Oh yeah, but first we gotta. Oops. Wait, what? Free. I just want to get used to the, because I think holding the shift makes it a lot easier. Um, then yeah, right there, and then we're gonna create an animation, and we'll call this. Wait, why is this lizard walk? Should it be lizard jump? Then we create animation. We'll call this the lizard jump. Then we're gonna place that in the animations. Delete this. Yeah, please excuse my <laughs> my mistakes. <laughs> uh, all right, so we, what we have here, we're just gonna drag and drop it. 
just to see how it plays. Nice, that looks good. And then go to animator. Let's let's speed up the frames a little bit. It looks good. I think I should make them more consistent with each other. They also look weird. Yeah, 20 frames is good. That's the same thing for there too. Alright, so now we have the animation for the laser jump. Let's go to our controller and then we're going to add jump here. And then... We did it automatically connect that last time? I forget. Can I delete this? Oh, it automatically goes in there. But I feel like there's a way to better do that. Make transition. And this one loops. Right, alright, so uh, fortunately, I think time is up. One hour. Yeah. So I just want to see if this works. And if not, then we'll see it tomorrow. I mean that's kind of awkward. Like I mean it does work, but like he just goes back. <laughs> so we'll have to see how he does that. All right, so I'm gonna end it here, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.